live, but mostly recorded, digitized, and distributed for your listening and learning pleasure. It's Mostly Accurate Lectures with Professor Mitchell, the series that answers the questions you might not have cared to ask. Professor Mitchell is an Associate Professor of Psychology and Behavioral Psychologist who specializes in questionable sarcastic comments and failures to return emails. So sit back, relax, pay attention, and ask yourself, Are you? Johnson, Hecker, Bonjour Lapine. Testosterone. Boys have it. It gets you like pumped up. It helps with muscle tone. Makes you horny. Makes men manly. In the traditional sense that you are more aggressive. So the sperm is in, in the testicles. And it comes up through, I guess, these little tubes. And down the thing. And somehow it gets shot out of the penis, out of the penis tubes. Into various parts of wherever that penis may be. The balls, the tip. That little like veiny thing right below the head, behind the penis. Ooh, the head. I know that one. Maybe the gooch is also sensitive, or maybe it's just like psychologically sensitive. It's unclear. Circumcision, I think, is when there's like an extra flap of skin. I don't know what the scientific term for it is. And it's removed. With a scalpel? And they cut off from like here to right here. Then it's just all nice and taut. I learned in Australia that mostly only Americans do circumcision. Is it on here? If I spoke Latin, I feel like I would know. Up here, maybe? This. It's like the fallopian tubes of the man. I think it's the tube that goes through the penis where the sperm travels, but now, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I, f I assume it feels like all of your thoughts become like, vessels on the blood that drains down to your penis. Maybe it's similar to like if you really had to sneeze. A clitoris that's just working really hard. Yeah, I don't know what an erection feels like. I don't think even they really know. Oh boy, my biology teacher would be really sad right now. All right, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of images from a very diverting paper in the, um, the Journal of Ultrasound in Medicine. I'm gonna go way out on a limb and say that it is the most diverting paper ever published in the Journal of Ultrasound in Medicine. The title is Observations of In Utero Masturbation. <laughs> okay, now on the left, you can see the hand, that's the big arrow, and the penis on the right, the hand hovering. And over here we have, in the words of radiologist Israel Meisner, the hand grasping the penis in a fashion resembling masturbation movements. Bear in mind, this was an ultrasound, so it would have been moving images. And uh, orgasm is a reflex of the autonomic nervous system. Now this is the part of the nervous system that deals with the things that we don't consciously control, like digestion, heart rate, and sexual arousal. And the orgasm reflex can be triggered by a surprisingly broad range of input. Genital stimulation, duh. Uh, but also, uh, Kinsey interviewed a woman who could be brought to orgasm by having someone stroke her eyebrow. Uh, people with spinal cord injuries, like paraplegias, quadriplegias, will often develop a very, very sensitive area um, right above the level of their injury, wherever that is. Uh, there's such a thing as a knee orgasm in the literature. I think the most, uh, the most curious one that I came across was a, it was a case report of a woman who had an orgasm every time she brushed her teeth. 
This was, <laughs> then this was uh, something in the complex sensory motor action of brushing her teeth was, 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 was triggering orgasm. And, they, and she went to a neurologist who was fascinated and you know, he checked to see if it was something in the toothpaste, but no, it happened with any brand. Uh, they stimulated her gums with a toothpick to see if that was doing it. No, nope. it was the whole, you know, m motion. Uh, and the amazing thing to me is that, you, now you would think this woman would like have excellent oral hygiene. <laughs> 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 um, sadly, she, this is what it said in the journal paper, she believed that she was possessed by demons and switched to mouthwash for her oral care. It's so sad. <laughs> um, I, uh, I interviewed, when I was working on the book, I interviewed a woman who can think herself to orgasm. She's, uh, she was part of a study at Rutgers University. Gotta love that, Rutgers. Um, and so she, uh, and I interviewed her in Oakland in a sushi restaurant. <clears throat> and I said, so could you do it right here? And she said, yeah, but you know, I'd rather finish my meal if you don't mind. <laughs> Uh, but afterwards, she was kind enough to demonstrate on a bench outside. It was remarkable. It took about one minute. Uh, and uh, I said to her, are you just doing this all the time? <laughs> she said, no, honestly, when I get home, I'm usually too tired. <laughs> she said that the last time she had done it was on the Disneyland tram. <laughs> I don't know. The headquarters for orgasm along the spinal nerve uh, is something called the sacral nerve root, which is back here. And if you trigger, if you stimulate with an electrode the precise spot, you will uh, trigger an orgasm. And it is a fact that uh, you can trigger spinal reflexes in dead people. A certain kind of dead person, a beating heart cadaver, and this is somebody who is brain dead, legally dead, definitely checked out, but is being kept alive on a respirator so that their organs will be oxygenated for transplantation. Now in one of these brain dead people, uh, if you trigger the right spot, there, you, can, uh, you will see something uh, every now and then, there's, it's a reflex called the Lazarus reflex, and this is, this is I, it's, I'll demonstrate as best I can, not being dead. It's uh, like this, you trigger the spot, the dead guy or gal goes like that very unsettling for people working in pathology labs. Um, now, if you can trigger the Lazarus reflex in a dead person, why not the orgasm reflex? I asked this question to a, um, a brain death expert, Stephanie Mann, who was foolish enough to return my emails. <laughs> uh, I said, so could you conceivably you know, trigger an orgasm in a dead person? And she said, yes, if the sacral nerve is being oxygenated, you, you conceivably could. And uh, obviously it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be as much fun for the person, but it would be an orgasm <laughs> nonetheless. I actually suggested to, uh, there's a researcher at the University of Alabama who does uh, orgasm research, and I, I said to her, you should do an experiment. You know, you, they, you can get cadavers if you work in a university. And I said, you should actually do this. She said, you get the Human Subjects Review Board approval for this one. <laughs> According to 1930s marriage manual author Theodore Van de Velde, a uh, slight seminal odor can be detected on the breath of a woman within about an hour after sexual intercourse. Uh, Theodore Van de Velde was something of a semen connoisseur. He, <coughs> this is a guy writing a book, Ideal Marriage. You know, it's a very heavy hetero guy. But he wrote in this book, Ideal Marriage, he said that he could differentiate between the semen of a young man which he said had a, a fresh, exhilarating smell, <laughs> and the semen of mature men whose semen smelled, quote, remarkably like that of the flowers of the Spanish chestnut, sometimes quite freshly floral, and then again, sometimes extremely pungent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in 1999, in the state of Israel, a man began hiccuping. And uh, this was one of those cases that went on and on. He tried everything his friends suggested. Nothing seemed to help. <clears throat> Days went by. At a certain point, the man, still hiccuping, had sex with his wife. And lo and behold, the hiccups went away. And he told his doctor, who published a uh, case report in the a Canadian medical journal under the title, Sexual Intercourse is a Potential Treatment for Intractable Hiccups. 
I love this article because um, at a certain point they suggested that unattached hiccupers could try masturbation. I love, <laughs> I love that because there's like a whole demographic, unattached hiccupers. <laughs> no, married, single, unattached hiccupper. In the 1900s, early 1900s, um, gynecologists, a lot of gynecologists, believed that when a woman has an orgasm, the contractions serve to suck the semen up through the cervix and sort of deliver it really quickly to the egg, thereby upping the odds of conception. It was called the upsuck theory. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> if you go all the way back to Hippocrates, uh, physicians believed that uh, orgasm in women was not just helpful for conception, but necessary. Uh, you would have the do doctors back then were routinely telling men the importance of uh, pleasuring their wives. Um, marriage manual author and semen sniffer, Theodore Vandevelde, <laughs> has a line in his book. I love this guy. <laughs> I got a lot of mileage out of Theodore Vandevelde. He had this line in his book that supposedly comes from the, the Habsburg monarchy, uh, where there was an um, Empress Maria Theresa who was having trouble conceiving. And apparently, the royal court physician said to her, I am of the opinion that the vulva of your most sacred majesty be titillated for some time prior to intercourse. <laughs> it's apparently, I don't know, on the record somewhere. Um, Masters and Johnson, now we're moving forward to the 1950s. Masters and Johnson were upsuck skeptics, which, which is also really fun to say. <laughs> they didn't buy it. And they decided, being Masters and Johnson, that they would get to the bottom of it. They brought women into the lab, I think it was five women, and outfitted them with cervical caps containing artificial semen. And in the artificial semen was a radio-opaque substance such that it would show up on an x-ray. Just amazing. This is the 1950s. Uh, and anyway, these uh, women sat in front of an x-ray device and they masturbated and the Nasters and Johnson looked to see if the uh, semen was being sucked up. Did not find any evidence of upsuck. You may be wondering, how do you make artificial semen? Uh, <laughs> I have an answer for you. I have two answers. You can use flour and water or cornstarch and water. Um, I actually found three separate recipes in the literature. My favorite being the one that says, uh, you know, they have the ingredients listed and then, you know, in a recipe it'll say, for example, yield two dozen cupcakes. Uh, this one said, yield one ejaculate. <laughs> um, there's another way that orgasm might boost fertility. This one involves men. Um, sperm that sit around in the body for a week or more start to develop abnormalities that make them less effective at headbanging their way into the egg. Uh, British sexologist Roy Levin has speculated that this is perhaps why men evolved to be such enthusiastic and frequent masturbators. <laughs> he said, if I keep tossing myself off, I get fresh sperm being made, um, which I thought was an interesting idea, theory. So now you have an evolutionary excuse. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. There is considerable evidence for upsuck in the animal kingdom. Um, pigs, for instance. In Denmark, the Danish National Committee for Pig Production found out that if you, artific if you stimulate, sexually stimulate a sow while you artificially inseminate her, you will see a 6% increase in the farrowing rate, which is the number of piglets produced. So they came up with this plan, this uh, five-point stimulation plan for the sows. And they had the farmers, they, you know, there's posters they put in the barn, and they get, had a DVD, and I got a copy of this DVD. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my unveiling, because I'm going to show you a clip. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, okay, now here we go. See, in it, la la la, off to work. And it all looks very innocent. Okay, he's going to be doing things with his hands that the, the boar would use his snout, lacking hands. Okay. This is the, the boar, the boar has a very odd courtship repertoire. This is to mimic the weight of the boar. You should know the clitoris of the pig inside the vagina. So this may be sort of titillating for her. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I 
and the happy result. I love this video. There's a point in this video towards the beginning where they zoom in for a close-up of his hand with his wedding ring, like as if to say, it's okay, it's just his job. He really does like women. <laughs> Okay, now I said when I was in Denmark, my host was named Anne Marie, and I said, So why don't you just stimulate the clitoris of the pig? The, you know, why don't you have the farmers do that? That's not one of your five steps. She said, uh, I have to read you what she said because I love it. She said, It was a big hurdle just to get farmers to touch underneath the vulva. So we thought, let's not mention the clitoris right now. <laughs> um, Shy but ambitious pig farmers, however, can purchase a, this is true, a sow vibrator that hangs on the sperm feeder tube to vibrate, um, because as I mentioned, the, clitor the clitoris is inside the vagina, so possibly, you know, a little more arousing than it looks. <laughs> um, and I also said to her, now these sows, I mean, you may have noticed there, the sow doesn't look to be in the throes of ecstasy, and she said, um, you can't make that conclusion because uh, animals don't register pain or pleasure on their faces in the same way that we do. They tend to, pigs, for example, are like, more like dogs. They use the upper half of the face. The ears are very expressive. So you're not really sure what's going on with the pig. Primates, on the other hand, we use our mouths more. Um, this is the ejaculation face of the stump-tailed macaque. Uh, <laughs> and interestingly, this has been observed in female macaques, but only when mounting another female. <laughs> Masters and Johnson in the 1950s, they decided, okay, we're gonna figure out the entire human sexual response cycle, from arousal all the way through orgasm in men and women, everything that happens in the human body. Okay, with women, a lot of this is happening inside. This did not stop. Masters and Johnson, they developed a, uh, an artificial coition machine, and this is Basically a penis camera on a motor. There's a phallus, clear acrylic phallus with a camera and a light source attached to a motor that's kind of going like this. And um, the woman would have sex with it. And that's what they would do. Pretty amazing. Um, sadly, this device has been dismantled. This just kills me. Cause, not because I wanted to use it. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to see it. Um, one fine day, Alfred Kinsey decided to calculate the average distance traveled by ejaculated semen. <laughs> this was not idle curiosity. Uh, Dr. Kinsey um, had heard, and there was a theory kind of going around at the time, this being the 1940s, that the force with which semen is thrown against the cervix was a factor in fertility. And Kinsey thought it was bunk, so he got to work. Uh, he got together in, <clears throat> in, his, la in his lab, uh, 300 men, a measuring tape, and a movie camera. <laughs> and, in fact, he found that uh, in three quarters of the men, the stuff it just kind of slopped out. It wasn't spurted or thrown or ejected under great force. However, the, um, the record holder landed just shy of the eight-foot mark, which is impressive. <clears throat> in <c> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Sadly, he's anonymous. His, not, his name is not mentioned. Um, in, in his write-up write of this experiment, in his book, Kinsey wrote, two sheets were laid down to protect the oriental carpets. <laughs> Which is my second favorite line in the entire oeuvre of Alfred Kinsey, my favorite being, cheese crumbs spread before a pair of copulating rats We'll distract the female, but not the male. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs>
<laughs> it starts in here. Inside the testicles, there are little, it's like a sperm factory. They sort of like go like on like a crazy water slide ride. It travels through, hmm. through the pink tube, as it's scientifically called. And out through the erection. The most sensitive part of the penis is the tip. The head? The tip. The head. The tip of the penis. A lot of people think that it's the tip of the penis, but it's actually the shaft of the penis. This like in-between part right here, pretty sensitive. The penis comes equipped with like a flap over it. The skin goes over like this, like a turtleneck. And circumcision is like when you cut off that ring. And they sew it back down the shaft. It's like an American thing or a Jewish thing. It's mostly a sanitary thing. It's controversial. The vas deferens is also known as the taint. Is that like your urethra? Is it a part of the penis? The vas deferens is the tube that connects the scrotum to the shaft. That's where you get clipped when you get a vasectomy. Like saying, what, what does your arm feel like? Like a good, strong, dark cup of coffee. Like an impatient little, like, sex gremlin in your pants saying, <laughs> Like a Who concert. You girls, you don't know how fun it is. Right. Me having a small dick. And it's really, horrible saying that because it's true i've always thought that i have a small cock and feel that others who have seen it think that it's a problem too it was a problem when i was young a problem in my teens and it's still a problem now this is what this film was about i want to find out why it's such a problem and if it's a problem for me is it a problem for other men We're going to Birmingham to um, talk with my dad um, about his penis. I wondered if he'd ever worried about its size, especially when he was in the army. Some of these real big, roughy-tuffy Welsh Gardens from South Wales, when they stripped off, it was then I saw, crikey, some big dicks, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> And how did that make you feel? Um, well, at, the f at, at first, I put my towel in front of me. I thought, bloody hell. But uh, after, after a couple of visits to the showers, no, nobody paid any attention uh, to who had what dangling between them. But how did you feel? At first? Yeah. Um, I think at that stage then, I thought, crikey, am I inferior? Uh, not, you know, by virtue of my dong wasn't as big as some of the lads there, you know, but... Uh, after the first couple of showers, it didn't bother me. What did you think when you saw Dad's penis for the first time? Well, no, you're getting personal now, you say, and that's not nothing to do with you. Well, like I said, it's hereditary, isn't it? You know, all the, even the grandchildren are blessed with the same thing, so... What, 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 what do you mean by that? Well, they're all blessed with it, you know. With what? With, with not having um, something like a donkey. How do you feel about you, the fact that 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 that, you, that I still have this problem? Well, you shouldn't have this problem. You know, you should let it go now. It's time that it went. You know, because you, 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 you know, like I say, it's not the size that matters, Lawrence. It's what you do with it that's important. The first time anyone other than my mum and dad saw my penis was at high school. It just got around, you know, suddenly, you know, I started hearing this word, bop, and then people used to start going, bop, to me. And I, I didn't know what it meant, and it was bop, you know, tiny penis, because it was. When I was being, um, bullied, this was a place to hide. Lucky stuff in a cubicle. I used to sit in here and eat my lunch. Because it was better than going outside. Just sit. Into the sun. 
This is the male changing. Change in front of these boys. They'd all be there, you know, take off the towel and be like, look at that, look at that, right? Let's use those for bop, bop, bop. I just want to go in, you know. Been here before, a million open Only one will set me free. People get bullied. I'm no different there. The only problem is that what they said then still bothers me now and even affects my relationship with my girlfriend, Nicola. In truth, what did you... What did you think when you saw it for the first time? Well, it wasn't massive. <laughs> and how did you say that yourself? And how did you, how did you, how did you react to that? You don't go around looking for massive ones. You don't. Do you wish I had a bigger penis? I do, yes. Not necessarily because it is a big issue. You would feel much better about yourself. You'd be more content. Surely it must tell you something now that you know, I've been with you eight years and I've never run off with anyone else. Doesn't that speak volumes? After finishing school, um, I came to uh, Warsaw College of Art and Technology. One of the girls is called Bethany. She was really, really, really attractive. So, you know, we're in the club and we're on the dance floor and we're dancing away with each other. And, you know, she, she kisses me and it's incredible. And then we go back to hers and we listen to music. And then um, she, uh, we're on the couch. She puts her hand down and it's just, just like reaching, it's like flailing around in the darkness. She's trying to find my penis, which at the moment I probably couldn't find. And then she eventually finds this kind of lump she just went, Ugh! and I'm like, oh no. And then she just rolls over and went to sleep. The following week at, at college, she sat there with all of her friends and she says, and they're talking about the weekend. And I'm there, standing there, and she just turns around and she goes, and I was just com you know, completely and utterly devastated as they kind of just burst into laughter. Everyone from that moment knew I didn't have a girlfriend or have sex for another three years. This experience you know, has, has tainted my entire um, life and even in a relationship with Nicola, even though it, it has been ongoing for the last eight years. Um, I still worry about the size of my penis. I decided to go and see Dr. David Ralph about having my penis surgically enlarged. Hello there. Hi, David Ralph. I'm Lawrence. How do you do? No, Lawrence, tell me what the problem is. Um, I I was uh, circumcised at a, a, a late age, and uh, ever since then, I'm not sure whether it's an actual physical problem that um, the si about the size of my penis. Right. Okay. Come on through. You just need to pop your trunks down to about there and I'll just do some measurements. Is 
is just the length that's the problem, or the width as well, or is it just mainly Both. everything? Mm -hmm. Okay, lie down. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Rather than give you an erection, we actually measure the penis by stretching it, which gives us a, a, a fairly good guide. Stretched is about seven centimetres. Going down to the pubic bone itself, you're up to about ten centimetres. Mm -hmm. That indicates you've got about three centimetres of fat in this area, so if we thin this out, it would appear two or three centimetres longer. This little bit of skin of the scrotum can be dropped back so it gives the appearance again that the penis uh, is longer. Okay, do you want to come through and we'll um, describe some of the operations? Right Lawrence, um, if I draw for you what's normal, it follows this a normal distribution, like so. In other words, the majority of people up here mm -hmm. have a size which is stretched length about 12 and a half centimetres. The actual average length in this country is five inches. Mm -hmm. But you are sort of in this area here. So I would agree that, I mean, the penis is small. So in mine isn't of normal? You are at the lower level of normal. And there are operations to get to, to make the penis appear longer. If you increase the penile length by two centimetres, then that is a fair sort of reflection of, of, of the end result. If you have operations to try and increase the erect length, then of course you have to operate on the body of the penis itself. Mm. But you do risk having difficulties if you get an erection afterwards. We're happy to do it, I mean, because we can get an extra couple of centimetres of, of apparent length. Um, uh, and, and we would do it for you on the NHS. OK, well, it was nice to meet you anyway. Yeah, thank and, you very uh, much. Let me know, you know, if you want to come go forward with things. Yeah, um, thank you. Are you tempted by surgery? Uh, no. I'm not tempted by surgery. I think there are other ways to deal with this. I'd thought that surgery would offer more. I didn't want to go under the knife for just two centimetres, especially when I still couldn't understand why the size of my penis was so important to me. Up until this point, I've never really seen a penis that was as small as mine in its flaccid state, and definitely not one in its erect state. But then the only penises I've seen in erect states are on movies or whatever, and, you know, why would they show something that is, that is as small as mine? We are at the uh, location of a porno film. I wanted to come here because um, I just wanted to talk to the actors and the actresses that are involved in it. Basically, I think I'm like the Arabian princess. And they're just both going to capture me and Roger me silly. Is this is this big for you? It's kind of normal. Tony's that size. <laughs> it's kind of normal. I, I find that completely terrifying. I mean, a lot of guys, obviously, yeah, it was terrifying at first. You think, oh my god. Is this how you get ready? Generally, yeah. Generally, I just sort of just put my hands in my pockets and just just play with it a little bit. You know, just tickle it at the end. That's it. That's all I normally do. You know, have to do really. It's a strange one. I want I want to see his penis. <laughs> I'm going to. It's that sound, the slapping, you know, that you're actually doing something, you know, it's going somewhere. You're an actor that acts in neurotic films, but you're renowned for having a big penis. I would say it was big, but if anything, <clears throat> it's, uh, I don't know, how can we put it? It's bigger than the average bear, but... So, you it's know, not, but, you're, you're, but that's, that's your kind of secret weapon, in a way. Right, okay. 
you know, and it's something I, you know, I've never felt that I've been in that position, and I never will be in that position. What's wrong with a six inch wheelie? What's wrong with with five inches, six inches, seven inches? It's not. No, but I'm talking a three inch erect. A three inch erect penis. But the thing is that I mean that that could work in a way to an interesting angle because I mean, not obviously you wouldn't get you wouldn't come into this industry, would you? Can I see it? No, absolutely not. You can see it on set, yeah, if we're working, yeah. <laughs> we do have a strange relationship, but... Uh, That's a good, it's a good thing. thing. It's a good thing. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> so tell me what it feels like when that goes inside you. Okay. Feels, I can't say, it feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to try this. Well, <laughs> you put a blindfold in, a man yeah. with a three-inch penis erect comes yep. and enters you now yes that would feel different wouldn't it of course everybody feels different would it feel good it would probably feel good i mean i can't i don't know not really happen to me but everybody feels different in a way um well it's about about two o'clock in the morning and um I've just had uh, sex with Nicola. You're thinking about my penis all the time. She's finding it very difficult to um, get it up and keep keep up keep up an erection. Um, and it's been like that for a, for a while now. Maybe Patricia Allen could help make my penis look bigger without surgery. These are some of the devices that we actually can teach you to use practically mm -hmm. to, act, to, to, to try to enhance the penile size and girth. What you basically have to do, and as I say, all of them work on the same principle, it, there's, a, there's a pump of some sort. Put your penis inside and get a good seal and then you start to pump. Mm -hmm. Oh and my there's, God. There's a button there, look. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that so arrow. I mean, so what do you just... Yeah. Oh. Uh, you feel it's okay? Yeah. And then and you turn that slowly up. Oh. You feel it pulling? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't really met a man ever that has been really happy with his penis size. I've met many men who aren't. It's not a problem that the, that the women have got, it's the man. And it's not so much what his wife thinks or his partner thinks, it's what he thinks other men are thinking. Things I do. I'm now going to shave off some of my pubes. How are you feeling? Well, I'm a bit nervous, obviously, you know? I mean, how do you feel about this? I don't see it actually doing anything, but I just see you as, as, as trying out one of the methods. But so you don't think it's going to work? No. So what's the point of me doing it then? You can try it and see. I don't know. I'm not a medical expert. Would you like it to work? It would be good. I mean, it'd be good for you if it worked, but I don't see it working. How's it feel? What do you mean weird? Oh fuck! Low, 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 low! Ooh. How's it feel? It feels really strange. It feels like I've got an erection. Is it? Yeah, but I've got an erection and it just doesn't feel sexual at all. It's clinical. Yeah, hang on. I just want to stop it a second. Fuck! Oh! Just feels some. Um, just feels completely, completely artificial, you know. Uh huh. There isn't a magical, no, there isn't a magical cure, is there? Otherwise, everybody'd be, everybody'd have big. No, ones. I mean, but it's it's not necessarily about how big it is and anything in your It's about feeling happy with what mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. and, and that it's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I was beginning to feel that maybe the problem was less in my pants and more in my head. I'd heard of a group in America called the Manhattan Small Penis Support Group and wondered if they could help me. Everyone wants to appear as normal as possible. It's all a bunch of guys just like, you know, going to stand up here and go, hey, my name's Lawrence Barracliffe and I've got a small penis. Is it going to actually make me feel better or am I just going to feel, I don't know, a bit silly? My goal from bringing people together to have this conversation is to really change the conversation. And the more that we have had these discussions and um, the more convinced I am that it's really about being able to talk. I remember when uh, I was uh, about 20, uh, some very nasty little queen once said to me, you look like you're hung like a chipmunk. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not as obsessed as, as I was in my 20s about it. I'm pretty, as I'm getting older, body acceptance is becoming the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, is it the fact that you've got a small penis that you're not confident or you're just not confident? Mm -hmm. You know? It always proved that I was inferior mm -hmm. because my dick wasn't as big as it should have been. Because it's the last thing people see, so it is the ultimate final measure of who you are. When I've mentioned going to this group to many of my friends, they get this kind of snicker, and I can tell that behind the snicker of is course. the sheer I've, I've, fear I've heard of, of approaching this, of the thought that someone, think, oh my God, if I went to that group, people would know I have a small dick, or they'd think I have a small dick. It's very easy to buy all those messages and then to say, oh, well, guess what? My dick is the size it is, and it is small, which means it is not good. I don't like it. It means I'm not really the man I want to be, but it's an important part of the body. It should be celebrated for what it is and what it means to you as a human being to have a penis. You know, I know what I need to do now, and I know how I need to do it. And these guys have reinforced that. And I need to make the, my penis part of my, you know, part of my body again. In Chicago, Cynthia Plasticaster is famous for making plastic ass of rock stars' cocks. She'd agreed to meet me, and I was hoping she'd make a cast of mine. Nice to see you. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Plaster Towers. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you always keep them like that? Have you laid, have you laid them out especially? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I mix and match them. Sweet babies. Lawrence. Lawrence, sweet babies. From left to right. Ed, um, Eddie Brigatti of the Young Rascals, lead singer. Jimi Hendrix of the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Mm -hmm. Kind of That's a... Jimi Hendrix's penis. That's incredible. Yeah. Can, I, can I touch it? Mm -hmm. That's that's incredible. I'm shaking holding Jimmy Hendrix's <laughs> penis in my hand. <laughs> I can't stop shaking holding. I'm going to put him down. There we go. Uh, Is that right? Yeah. Okay. That's then. fine. That's a that's a cracker. That one it really. Is. Yeah. He he was one guy that just wouldn't go down. It's that's a hundred percent capability. You see, I'd like to have a penis that was this size. It's a nice looking penis. It is. That's a that's a lovely looking penis, isn't it? Lawrence, I gotta tell you something. I'm gonna cast you, okay? I just I don't even care if you're a shitty filmmaker, which you probably aren't. I just love the idea so much. I think it needs to be done. It's official. I'm gonna cast you, okay? <laughs> oh well that's just um But you're gonna have to get yourself off, okay? That's that that's because you haven't got a partner in town and that's just the way it's gotta be though. Mm. That that's that's how I work when I cast people that don't have partners, okay?
um, Lawrence doll. I'll probably um, be ready for you in about five or ten minutes. Hey, Lawrence, why don't you come in here now? <laughs> it's not. It's not hard to see what you can do. Don't worry, doll. If you're soft, you're, you'll be soft with the best of them. All right. I'm gonna get your balls in there. Now, why don't you lean back against the fridge? So how does it feel? What does the dome feel like? I'm just dribbling, it's just dribbling down my leg and it's cold. But dribbling I, down your leg. But I can't feel my penis at all. Okay, it's starting to harden. Yeah, I can feel it. Ooh! Right. I think it's safe to take it off now, so. I just know it's gonna hurt when I pull it off my pubes. Just pull it, come on, I don't okay. mind. Okay. Just pull. Ah! Uh, just pull. Does it hurt more? Uh, I, I just, just pull, pull, pull. Ah! What are you gonna do now? I'm gonna uh, remove the mold from this cup. Oh my god! Is that good? Oh yeah, I can see great detail. That's what I'm looking that? for. That's probably loose skin. Yeah. Which means, you know, potential, potential hard on that didn't happen. Yeah, it's really good detail. How many people can say that they can actually look at their penis from this perspective? <laughs> can I pick it can I pick it up? Don't shake it. I just want to go home now and, and display this with pride, you know? It's my cock. It's my cock. Oh, you shot? Yeah.